Okay, today I'm going to be seeing what happens when you put sodium in liquid gallium. So let's pour our gallium in here. So gallium metal has a melting point of around 85 degrees Fahrenheit or 30 degrees Celsius. So that means that you can just hold it in your hand and it'll melt. It's really cool to play with. And unlike mercury, it's not dangerous to actually touch. The worst thing it does is stain your fingers. But one of the most interesting things about gallium is that it can form cool alloys with other types of metals. And some of those alloys even have a lower melting point than gallium itself. For example, when you mix gallium with indium, it forms an alloy that is more like mercury because it has a much lower melting point. So you can see what happens when I mix gallium with indium. So if I just touch them together, and it starts to melt. See it melt? So it's forming an alloy at the tips here. This is a similar alloy that's used in thermometers, the ones that look like they're mercury, but they're not. Let's see if I can get a little drop to form here. So here's my gallium indium alloy. Looks just like mercury, but infinitely safer than mercury. And what's really cool about gallium is if you get it on aluminum, the gallium diffuses through the crystal structure of aluminum and makes it extremely weak. You can actually break it with your own hands. Let me show you. Okay, so first I need to clear off the surface oxidation of the aluminum so that the gallium can actually penetrate the surface. Okay, so that's where I'm gonna set my gallium now. You can see the shiny part there. The drop right there. Okay, now let's let it sit for a while. You can see it absorbing down the side of the aluminum here. <laughs> okay, it's like dripping off the aluminum now. <laughs> so it's forming this gallium aluminum alloy now. So what's cool is you can see that this is now a different alloy because it's not quite liquid anymore. It's kind of bendable. <laughs> okay, let's see what it did to this pipe now. Whoa. <laughs> Look, it just breaks. I can literally just break off pieces with my fingers. So it looks like in about three hours, this is about as far as the gallium moved down. So the gallium has to diffuse through the aluminum. It looks like it only made it about this far. Once I get past this point, it becomes really hard, almost like it's real aluminum now. So what's happening here is the gallium diffuses into the crystal structure of the aluminum and disrupts it. So now the bonds aren't as strong and it can't hold the aluminum together as well. Okay, now let's cut us a chunk of sodium. So sodium is a very soft metal. You can cut it with a butter knife. There we go. You can see that it quickly oxidizes once I cut it and gets this surface oxidation on there. Cut off some of this salt on the side. So on the side here, this is sodium hydroxide that forms when moisture from the air reacts with the surface of the sodium. So I just want to cut it off. It'll start to form again, but at least get most of it off. So I want to get this off to 
Let the gallium have the best chance at reacting with the actual sodium. Okay, now let's get our sodium. Okay, I'm gonna scratch it and right away put it in. <laughs> Look at it flow on it. <laughs> so there's no reaction happening here. So look at the sodium float on top of here like an ice cube. I push it down and it floats right back up. You can kind of suction it to the bottom and then once it finally releases it pops back up. So I'm gonna try to cut it while it's in here underneath the gallium so that there's no air so that I can actually get it to touch the sodium and not the oxidized part of the sodium. There we go, Let's see if that works. Okay, now let's let this sit for a while and see if the sodium gets brittle at all. Okay, so the sodium's been in here for over an hour now. Let's see if it's brittle or not. Okay, let's cut it. So it doesn't seem like the sodium and the gallium mixed at all. This is as pliable as ever. In fact, you can kind of just roll it into a ball. Okay, so now let's see if it changes how it reacts with water. Let me pour it in a little bit bigger container. Okay, let's throw some water in here and see what happens now. <laughs> this is gonna be crazy. Okay, here we go. Whoa! Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, this just happened. <laughs> Holy cow. Okay, so this is why you don't play with molten sodium, folks. <laughs> um, <laughs> some of it splashed on there. It actually splashed on the top, I think, and melted through. Yeah, so it looks like it just splashed right through it and then caught it on fire. <laughs> that was crazy. Okay, so look at this in here now with the water. So this is actually sodium hydroxide water now. So it's a strong base in there with the gallium. So I'll have to get the gallium out of there somehow. So that was so cool. You can actually see when it explodes, see the gallium splash up. <laughs> that was awesome. You can see my sodium hydroxide water here. It's starting to cool off now, and so now the gallium is starting to form these crystal structures in there. So we have these gallium ice cubes in there. Let's grab one of these and see what it looks like. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Hey everyone, thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, remember to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when my latest videos out. And you can check out theactionlab.com to see the Action Lab subscription box. 
and check out the link in my description for my new book, Extreme Garage Science, where I chose my favorite experiments from my channel that you can do at home and teach you how to do them. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.